time are. But I know. All right. That's us. Guys, thanks a lot for joining us. If you're watching this after we've been live, thanks very much. I've got the one, the only, the man behind So Rare Data himself, our Lord and Saviour when it comes to information and data on <laughs> the So Rare, um, not, just the, not just the market, but SO5 scores and, you know, different trajectories for players. Um, Max, it's been a long time coming. Thanks very much for joining the channel. Coincidentally, it's probably the best time you could have came on, I think. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, a lot of things to talk about and uh i'm so glad to be here i'm loving your content so oh, thank you much appreciated um uh, you know there's been a lot of stuff coming out this week with mls being back and everything um but there's so much more stuff to, to come out over the next couple of weeks um the stuff i've got written on that whiteboard and whatever and a lot of it is powered by so rare data you know a lot of the information i can get from the website is absolutely tremendous and um, it's really i was going to say it's really funny but it's, it's one of these things that privately like with people i talk to i probably said it on the stream before max but I've been almost like just waiting for the opportunity to to actually pay you in some way. <laughs> yeah, thank you, you for know, that. So, thank you, thank uh, you so much. I'm not gonna lie, right? I'm probably the same as most people that will tune into the stream, right? But I'm quite stingy when it comes to my cards and when it comes to my ETH. So having the the PayPal button there, me, I'll give you pounds. Pounds are fine, you know. I've got enough of them. But cards, they're precious, and ETH, you never yeah, know what's gonna happen to sure. that, you know. <laughs> sure. Uh, at some point, like people when. When, and before the frenzy, etc., and uh, people were like, "Okay, some cards are worth like three cents of an F," and yep. uh, they were like, "Okay, it's basically something I would never sell anyway, so let's give it to Sorry Data." And I think some people are regretting that <laughs> today. <laughs> and uh, but yeah, no, I understand that cards are precious, and uh, thank you so much for for donating to that and thanks to everyone that supports my job it's 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 what keeps me going i mean without the support of the community uh, i wouldn't be there today so that's well, great uh, well, only kind of you know it's something i've been aware of obviously just from you know knowing who you are and you know what you get up to and listening to your podcast and this kind of thing but you know like you are just another manager, you know, like if you, this is what I always think when I think about you as the person, right? Imagine you never made this website, you know, you would be so dangerous on the leaderboards every game week. You'd have such an untold advantage over so many other guys, you know, so thanks very much for, you know, being more of a community guy than anything else, you know, in that respect. So I tip my hat to you. Yeah, yeah, I guess I, I guess I'm a bad manager. Uh, because I did so all the time because I have no time to set my lineup so I'm into do kind of the you know suspensions injuries I'm still alive myself um, uh, I'm not too sure we've got Max guys two seconds hey oh you're back yeah I, I oh. lost connection somehow oh that's no, okay I am um, I think it I'm not too sure if it was on my end. I think it might be because um yeah, I, don't know. I think it was my connection. Anyway. Oh, was it? Okay, no problem. I'll just try and get it set back up. Guys, thanks for bearing with me. I'm not sure. The stream seemed to kind of cut out as a whole. And then that should catch. That should catch. Um, I'll just wait for that to catch up. Max, I've got you on screen. Yeah, Can you hear me okay, yeah? Yeah. Sorted. What I was saying is I'm a bad manager, so don't, <laughs> don't take my advice. Just use the website for whatever you want, but don't don't take my <laughs> bad advice. No, fair enough. And I, I think it's just look. I've now I'm on so rare data now, Max. Just because with a little Zoom thing cutting off, I might have actually lost it. Oh no, I think it's coming back. Um, so you might just pop up back on screen saying you guys are watching this. Please bear with us with the Zoom connection. Um, but th this week on so rare, so. Uh, Normally what I do on the stream, Max, I don't know if you've caught the streams and stuff like that, I know you're a busy yeah. man, but normally I'll have a wee kind of glance through at what I'm leaving behind me on this game week. There's not been really much going on. Um, unfortunately, Gabriel Magalhães has never made the Arsenal squad, so I had a really punty Division 3 outfit that may have done something had he played, but it's ended up with nothing. And I think I'm just going to miss out on Efer with no Sherpin playing in goals for Ajax. So we have a bummer of a midweek for me. Normally, what I would come on to at this stage would be <laughs> I'd normally start to actually um, go through my lineups and stuff like that. But I have lost your screen, Max. I'm going to try and pull you back on. And then what I'll do for all the people at home is I'll get into the comments section. And well, I think, first of all, most of the questions will probably be coming to us away from today's announcement. So we'll touch on that. And um, yeah. I'll probably just glance through my teams as we're chatting, no doubt. Um, yeah, this is... I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get you back on screen, Max, just with that Zoom cutting out. I'm really sorry. 
Um, it may pop back up, but I can see it's it's kind of it's a wee bit of a pain in the bum. Sorry for you guys at home, by the way, that haven't listened to me <laughs> talk through the technical difficulties and whatever. But the MLS um, coming back for his max. Is that something yeah. you've been... Are you excited about that for your own gallery? I mean, D4 and D3 should be... Okay, I mean, D4 should be good. I uh, had some, like, Seattle players as rewards uh, this season, so nice. excited to play them. And I'll be a, a Sounders fan this year just to uh, uh, just to cheer on my guys. And, uh, yeah, pretty excited. And uh, also opened... Um, Champion America Cup on uh, Sora Data, so um, that should be a fun competition to watch also. And uh, yeah, looking forward to see who gets the D1 Champion America this week. Like, all the big guys have been preparing for this, and uh, I'm not sure A Dots, uh, he has the most cards, but I'm not sure he is going to win it. Some no. heavy competition uh, over there. Not confident he's going to pull it off. Nah, <laughs> I think like, but let's see, I guess. Let's see. It's pretty exciting to see. And uh, for many managers that have invested like a lot on MLS cards uh, these past few weeks, uh, I guess it's exciting to see uh, how it goes for them. I think um, like, AJ has definitely got the most MLS like top end cards or uniques and stuff like that. And yeah. uh, when I hear those guys talking, obviously I'm not at that end of the market or the competition. I've just been trying to get your camera back on, so it's just not catching now, Max. I'm sorry. Um, but it's more about the cards that your opponents don't have as well. I believe that does come into it a fair bit as well. Yeah. Um, so it might be one of these ones. I've just received a wee DM, a wee direct offer. I'll maybe check on that later. And what I'll do for you guys is I'm going to pull up the announcement. So it's going to be America D4 and D3 for you, um, Max. That's pretty much where I'm going with America's. I kind of toyed with the idea of maybe getting a little D2 out in America. But what I've opted for is I've just went for a really punty global D2 and just got everything and anything that I've got um, that's spare and just kind of tossed it in. Um, yeah. So, I'm, it, you know, it's one of these ones. I, I, I'm really glad you're supporting Seattle because I've got a wee soft spot in my heart for them. I hope you don't have a Ladero card, but... Yeah, I have a Ladero card. Um, it's one of the greatest cards I own uh, <laughs> on the MLS side, but yeah, a bit a bit saddened that he's not going to play at least the first game. I heard that he was basically going to play maybe next one, or maybe enter the the, the game. Uh, oh the really? Game. I heard it was a lot bit worse than that, but that's brilliant. I, I'm I, I rely on you to know a bit better than me because I've not been I've not got Modelo, so I'm not as um, as close to it, you know. Yeah, but yeah. Um, should we should we do like your lineups for for uh, Champion America or something? I tell you what, I'll, I'm gonna have a quick glance through at the comments. We've got a bunch of them coming through from folk. So um, I've got uh, I've got Wood, but Woody Baggies is here. Evening, good to see you, my pal. Uh, Jonathan B, would you say it's even possible to win rewards in Champion America without a rare goalkeeper? I'll answer that question quite quickly, Jonathan. It will be difficult. Um, because there's just going to be a fair amount of them in D4, I would imagine. Nothing more than that. Common goalkeepers, I would try and keep them for global at the moment. But you never know. This for... Max, that's probably a good question for you. A common goalkeeper in America D4, I know it'll be hard for you to forecast, but would you see that as something that could bear fruits? I mean, if you if you can keep a, a clean sheet, it's definitely a viable option. It depends on the cards that you have, uh, the four other cards also, but I say... I've been surprised to see like people winning cards with uh, common goalkeepers, and uh, sometimes a common goalkeeper is way better than a rare goalkeeper because it's basically sixty-five or seventy or thirty-five to forty. So the yeah. gap is big enough that if you have a good goalkeeper um, that is a common card, you can still do something. But I would say I would prefer like using it in global d4 so i can get the open the point oh one or the point oh two eth and uh but yeah if you have already a viable lineup in d4 in global d4 i would say like yeah you have a good chance to actually do something in uh, d4 if your goalkeeper can keep a clean sheet or stop a penalty or something but get a decisive action at least yeah, well, I, yeah, well, I'm making it quite right. It's, it, that's probably the best way of putting it. Is it depends what you've got alongside it because, as you rightly say, if you've got a common like Blake or Room or something like that who could shoot like a seventy, 
then you know you, you could pass for that certainly if you've got the defenders and the guys around it um there's not actually any questions come in as of yet about the new reward structure so i think where we just wait for the guys to catch up with us i think i will have a wee flick through one or two of my teams maxi um so i had a really tough decision this game i don't know about i don't really know about your, your own personal gallery forgive me but um I, i've been waiting for this for a long time <laughs> i've been stacked up on mls cards i've been big, building my gallery yeah. elsewhere so i now feel really strong and really capable across like a you know a, a wide berth of the competition now so I've been really looking forward to getting stuck into it. So I had a lot of fun doing my teams. It took me forever. And I think I've redone them about four times. But I think I'm finally kind of settled on where I'm going to lie. What I've done, yeah. Maxi, for this one, and I don't know if, if you can operate in this way, but what I've done, just because of the prizes on offer, is I've, uh, what I've started doing is I've been doing my Champion Euro team first. And I've been kind of almost yeah. like reserving my Champion Euro cards for Champion Euro if I can get away with it. Um. So, in my D, uh, I'll have a look at my D3 first of all, so I'll have two super rares in here. So, my D3 in Global All-Star D4, I'm running out with Tripliac, which is all black and Trippier. Renato Sanchez, who's back in the team and hitting some form. Sorloff, who's finally scoring some goals in Captain Depay. So, I'm hopeful that can get me quite far. Are you in champion Euro D3 this week, Max? Yeah, so basically, I'm, the priority division is always champion Euro D3. Yep. And then... All of the D3, like, let's say uh, Challenger Europe, then All Star D3, and then I do all my D4. If uh, yeah, basically I, I have enough cards to do D3 and D4. Sometimes D2, but D2 I always like just I have like pretty okay, let's say uh, super rares, and sometimes it, it goes well, but like you know only the top 10 gets gets uh, rewarded so it's pretty difficult if you don't have the top uh, SRs to actually win something uh but yeah d3 my main my main division is always champion europe d3 because it's always the division when you can earn so many big cars even if you end up at the at the end of the of the price of the paid ranks it can be uh, so much better car than a very competitive D4. Agreed, totally. D D3 has always been the one that's excited me the most for my position in the game in terms of the gallery that I've got and any kind of, you know, aspirations I could get for moving up. It was always with D3 in mind. And, um, you know, I have kind of flirted with the idea of messing about in D2. And I'll be messing about this game week, but I don't have enough, like, experience of it. And what you've said, yeah. Max, is kind of what I was kind of fearful of. Is like, oh, well, without... Like with MLS, for example, without like a Vela super rare or you know something of that kind of standing, it can be difficult to get really really far, you know. Um, but let's see, you know, it's all about the scores. I've got five super rares out in the one team. I was actually thinking about dropping one of them for a rare. See, when you do kind of venture into D two, will you go five super rares every time? Do you have any uniques that you yeah. use, or would you go for a rare? So I have one unique. So, so it's Joaquin Correa, so I use it every nice. time I can. Yeah, the, the funny story is the, the the only time I've won a D2 is when Juventus and Napoli played and the match was cancelled. <laughs> and I had two West Ham and two North player that scored amazing this time. And the lineups behind were like one player short because uh, Ronaldo didn't play or something. Yeah. And I got Korea from the from this um, victory that that was great. Uh, didn't score that much and didn't help me at all in D two uh, from that point. But um, yeah, my D two are always uh, one rare goalkeeper and then four super rares and uh, a unique if I can put Korea in it. But on your D three, the question I have for you is: Are you comfortable with uh, two SRs necessarily or? Are you okay with playing with only one SR or even five rares? Because I mainly do five rares because I'm not comfortable enough in my super rares to actually beat the other rares that I have. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, totally. Well, see, actually, in this game week, we're just about to close out. I went D3 with five rares. And if the Gabriel played, I know it was a really small game week match-wise, you know, but if the Gabriel played, I was definitely within a shout. Even with him DNPing, at this point in time, according to so rare data, I'm reliably informed, I'm less than 40 points from a Tier 2 with a DNP yeah. and All-Star D3, you know. Um, and I say, granted, it was a quiet game week for matches, and 
a lot of the big hitters like PSG and Bayern cards, are not a lot of them scored that great. And I had, coincidentally, Navas in goals and Sani up front, and they both scored kind of good. <laughs> so yeah. that whole playing a striker against your goalkeeper, I thought it was going to backfire because it probably should have, but it actually worked out quite okay. I just wish I maybe put Gabriel Mancini or even Hale Kawabe into that team now because they've definitely done much better. But you definitely don't need the super rares. You just need the cards you've got to hit. Yeah. I, I personally would have done that this game week. I don't really have much more of an option, if I'm honest. But normally, Max, to be honest with you, one SR is kind of my minimum to really take a D3 seriously. And if I've not got one SR that I'm happy with, then generally speaking, I'll just try and find something else to focus on. Maybe it'll be doubling down on a D4 and just go all guns blazing on one of them rather than trying to stretch it into a D3. But it depends, you know. Yeah. I actually, you, I mean, when, when you were telling that story, I actually remembered your tweet about, you know, see, as soon as you were telling me that about the nonce and the West Ham players, I was getting major deja vu. I was like, I remember all that. I didn't, I, I, you know, the memory only came back to me as you were, you know, telling the story. But I know that, that's a good one. I had a similar uh, thing with D2 getting a bit lucky with a game cancellation. But you get them when you come, don't you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's why I'm always playing a D2 because you never know what can happen. Also, your players can do fantastic all together in one week. And uh, that's the beauty of the game. And by hopefully with the new reward structure, and that's maybe a good transition or not, I don't know. But uh, we'll see more uh, possibilities for D2 and uh, hopefully more rewards. And uh, hopefully these lineups... uh, will score some cars after all so what, what i've got on screen max for the, the, the guys at home this is my global all-star d3 and it was the first division i thought of right away when you asked me that question because that's the main division where i do think do you know what a really op rare um going into all-star d3 you know it doesn't matter what region it's in could actually you know work out for you in a kind of differential standpoint you'll have access to that kind of information oh, i suppose we all do but um but you'll see that type of thing where sometimes it's like only like 5% of card owners actually deployed this guy. And then, yeah. you know, like only 2% of them were in global. The other 3% was in Asia or, you know, whatever it is. Um, so sometimes those high-powered rares, you know, can be the difference. And it, global global D3 is probably the only division I would entertain um, one SR and below, you know. Like Champion Euro, I think if you're going to never with one SR, it's really tough, isn't it? Because there's so many Bayern SRs and um, even Real Madrid are doing okay then, I suppose, in Liverpool can be okay but yeah so it is a tough one but i, I know what you, i know what you're saying because sometimes i've done it myself you pick a super rare and you've got a rare card in d4 that nails it you know you know i wish i just picked him but your d3 like this week d3 is actually like uh, very impressive i i would like to have such a d3 lineup i mean akimi and Vlasic and vela and i mean all the lineups is, is crazy i mean <laughs> A good one, isn't yeah, it? <laughs> my, I mean, my question would be like, when did you buy the, those MLS cards? Like before it went crazy on the market, or when? So those two specific cards, truth be told, like I actually got them in a trade. Listen to this, Max. Right, I've okay. told this story too many times, so I won't give it the big story, right? But basically, in America D two, I entered it one game week, and it was a game week where half the teams were on strike for Black Lives Matter or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Right. Mate, I was in D2, mate, with five rares and finished fourth. <laughs> I mean... I just thought, fuck yeah. it, I just done it. <laughs> it just paid off. So I got a Latif yeah. Blessing super rare. And on the old Matrix, he was incredible. Good. Yeah, and yeah. So somebody gave me a trade that was... Um, oh, the account's still around. It's all for sale or cards for rent. It was that account. He messaged me and he wanted to do a trade Vela and Medina for my blessing and I managed to talk him into Medina and the Vela and a third of an ETH <laughs> for the blessing. <laughs> so yeah, Why not? It worked out pretty good. I used that third yeah. of an ETH and I went and bought Badgie and he's not really done much so that might have been a bit of a waste. But these two guys is have been long, I've been dying to get them back on the pitch together. Vela, I've never even used him. He was basically injured the whole yeah. time. And Medina got all his good scores that you'll see on so rare data. I managed to make use of those Medina scores, which was nice. But I've had them a good while. So they're all quite leveled up. You can see they've lost their season bonus. But if you look at the multipliers I've got, I've still got them at a good level. So I should be going in there swinging hard. I love Vlasic, I love Hakimi. And Clark is just the kind of best kind of goalkeeper. I don't need to be somewhere else regionally. I mean, Medina's scores are crazy. Like, the... The six past games he played in, like he never went 
under 70. Yeah. Like, wow. I mean, yeah. Hopefully he, he stays on the same form and uh, can score some good points for you. Thank you very much. I think he's uh, I think his points will dip a little bit. I think I don't know. I hope not, but I think they might. You know because um, yeah, some of those scores are some rotation things with the team and a few other bits and pieces. So I'm quietly holding my breath to see how well he does. I'm hoping he does it as well as he was doing, but I'm expecting I'm expecting maybe a wee bit not as as good as I think he might not be. Um, I've just dived <laughs> over to my America D three um as well because I'm kind of the same as you Max when you were talking about how you run through your teams and stuff like that I kind of go all D3s <laughs> first and then double back to the D4s yeah. and co cover over again um, so for my Champion America D3 I went with Andre Blake Ronald Matarita Zella Ryan who I went captain Super Rare Barco and then Johnny Russell so I'm quite hopeful on that one as well in your America D3 are you going to give us any secrets who you, who you went for? so I don't have much choice uh, let's see I I actually do my lineups uh, like the on Fridays, but I can tell you what I've done, <laughs> like okay. what I should do. I mean, um, goalkeeper, it will be Fry uh, for um, uh, Seattle, and um, I have uh, Abu Bakar in the, um, defender. I have uh, I, I don't know how to pronounce it, Jackson Ewell, uh -huh. uh, super rare uh, in midfield. Uh, decent scores, but yeah, he'll be better this I year. Mean, Promise you. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. I have like a Jao Paulo or um, a Pedro Santos um, as an extra player. Nice. And uh, I have to make a call between Nani and Diego Rubio um, at forward. So That's Nani tough. is like Nani is like old and doesn't play like the whole game but have Na some good scores I'm, I'm, but, I'll tell you uh, this now Maxi Nani will probably play 90 minutes against Atlanta that's like a big derby match for them and Nani is like yeah. he's so I don't know if you've watched much MLS so I'm really sorry but see last year Nani or since he's been in Orlando to be quite truthful he really does try like so hard he's not taking it as a holiday you know like he really <laughs> does put his all into it you know so I can see him doing really well yeah. it just it depends on the rest of the team I suppose but in terms of Orlando, but I think Danny's a good shout. Don't know much about Rubio in terms of where he's at in the, in the club. Yeah, I mean, I'm not a big MLS guy and I don't know exactly how these guys will perform, but, you know, I did my buys on Story Data. I was like, <laughs> at the beginning of MLS, I didn't know anyone and I like, Lodero seems like a good buy, Joao Paulo seems like a good buy, and yeah. these guys just nailed it in the season but it was just pure luck basically but um hopefully these guys can score quite a while get quite a good score um this season again um it should be fun but i mean that's the power of soya anyways that mean like you don't know anything about like a country or uh, a league and you just get passionate about uh about a team or about a player that you would have never played I uh, would have never seen played um, in another way. And that's just awesome. I, I look forward to stay up late to watch <laughs> Seattle play. I know what I actually got. I don't know if you've seen it, but Seattle Sounders see their third strip. It's a special edition yeah. J Jimi Hendrix strip. I bought one. Yeah. And, uh, I oh, got, yeah. I got sure. Christian Roldan number seven on the back of it. So I need to go That's and get great. a Roldan card, but he's no cheap at the moment. So I'm gonna wait, my, <laughs> gonna wait and see if I can win him or maybe get something I can trade against. Yeah, him. your D three has a good chance to win him. Yeah, and uh, Roldan, you know, on so rare data especially, you know, he's he's a very attractive card. You know, he, he scores really well, plays a lot of matches. Um, so that that, that could be quite a good season. I've just got on screen the now my Asia D three. I've not got any hope in it. Ki Sung Young, my super rare midfielder, probably won't play. He's been kind of out the team at the moment, but I think with maybe some sort of uh, injury. And I've avoided guys. I don't know if you know this at home, but Kashiwa Reso and um, the Antlers, Kashima Antlers and Kashiwa Reso, they've both got COVID like um, scares. Yeah. So I've tried to. I've got. I've actually got two players from each team that I heavily rely on for Asia. I've tried to avoid them all as, as best as I can. I've had to keep one in. I'm not really holding my breath on Asia this week. Um, do you have an Asian... Did, did you go in the Asia region yourself, Maxi? No, I had uh, Slowik as a goalkeeper at once, ah. and I had, like, good cards. I had, like, um, 
I don't remember this name, but uh, one U23 uh, that went crazy like in the market like uh, recently, and I saw him like at under point one while he was uh, going for point three actually. Oh wow! And uh, yeah, <laughs> crazy stuff. Like I I tried not to watch or not to try and uh, see the deals I've done before the frenzy and before everyone go went crazy on uh, MNS or also K League because I mean I sold Matthews also Matthews was a great card Matthews SR yeah. I sold him at, a, at the current price of a rare card and I was like oh it's a good deal uh, actually 0.75 I think and right now it's one of the biggest card of the game uh, and in, in Asia actually yeah. But yeah, no, I, I don't know Quite anything about Asia, <laughs> and so D four, even D four, I don't I don't go in uh, in Champion Asia. I'm just going to dive back into the the comment section. I think I've got we've got some questions coming towards us now. Um, da, 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 da. Chris Quirk, can you see them doing anything about goalkeeper pricing moving forward? Still an issue yet to be addressed. Um, I, I think the I think the reward structure, which we'll probably maybe talk about in a minute, I think that might be a move towards it. And uh, again, Maxi, I'm, I'm sure we'll get into this in a bit more detail, right? I think some guys were maybe suspecting there, there might be like, a new scarcity coming like in this kind of time period that we've just had with the new reward structure. As far as I'm aware, I don't think the the game economist person that they're, they're looking to hire to help them implement that change, I don't think that person's been hired yet. So if that was the kind of change you would expect and hoping for around like goalkeepers and that kind of thing in the immediate short term, um, then just make sure you, you keep up to date with all the information they're putting out there because I don't think I say the person's even been hired yet. We normally get we announcements when people yeah. join the team and that kind of thing, you know. Yeah, but I think like okay, well, yeah, um, a game economist is um, a good place to start. But also, I think on the technical side, they don't have the uh, scalability solutions that they need to release like uh, a new scarcity. So I don't think like until we have those solutions that um, we're going to actually have a new scarcity. Yeah. So my guess, my wild guess is basically September for the new scarcity. And I wouldn't expect anything uh, before September, actually. Yeah, well, S September sounds like a decent time scale to me. Because I say it's one of these things you don't want to rush it or anything anyway. And in terms yeah. of the technical aspect, you know, I'm, I'm, I make it quite spot on there. Doing it now is definitely not um, in the best interest to anyone, I think. Richard Dodd says, hi, good evening. Um, Maxim, you're in the comments. <laughs> and then we've got Dom. Dom's coming in saying, hi, what's the buzz? Richard Dodd, uh, I think getting rid of the ETH threshold where a big mistake maybe rising the points needed to 240 and paying a wee bit more ETH is a better option. Now, I'll, I'll kinda, uh, I suspect you guys watching the stream, you've read this announcement. I read it twice, okay, which normally I like to read it maybe a bit more than that before talking about it on, on camera or whatever. But... I know the main aspect of it is the e-threshold is what most people are going to want to talk about. Now, the first thing I'll say, Max, right, I think we might have said this before we came on stream. I've seen it in a group chat with some of the guys, so I can't remember. I'm sorry. But I don't think a lot of people in the audience will maybe remember when the e-threshold came out. But the intention of the e-threshold when it first came out was to help new users on board that couldn't believe that ether had went to like £400 when it was at £200 yeah. for so long. <laughs> and it was to help the onboarding process with that. So in the short term being pegged to a dollar value I think sensible from the company because ETH thresholds when they first came out Maxi again I don't know about you I'm sure you will remember but I remember getting ETH payments and they were worth like three pounds you know <laughs> ETH wasn't it wasn't worth that much it wasn't anything you know yeah yeah I mean I think we have to see what's um, in store for us um, as a replacement and um, yeah. I think that um once we see what they have in mind for the replacement of uh, thresholds, um, we can actually complain or uh, tell what's wrong. But I mean, with the F rising and uh, starting uh, price uh, being aligned with um, Euro and not F anymore, like uh, now you can buy a rare card for 0 0.002. Actually, uh, uh -huh. since the F has gone so up, <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I'm not surprised they align price with um, with the dollar. Um, sure, it's not very, uh, let's say, uh, good to hear. But I mean, it's not a it's not a surprising decision, and I don't think it will harm that much uh, the new managers. But I, I'm 
um, the thing we need to take a look at is uh, what they will introduce to replace this. And also I think like what goes pretty much um, unnoticed is um, the, the actual random rewards, like the tier three cards that would be dropped yep. even if, we, if you are not in a guaranteed spot. So I think that's good because you have like so many players that play in D4 that play for those thresholds that will now get cards even if they don't reach a certain place. So I think that's good. I think we need to see how the experiment goes and then make some appropriate feedback. We have seen so many times uh, decisions being reverted because it wasn't working. Yep. So I guess just time will tell if it's good or bad and uh, I'm sure they will tweak some things it's, if, it's the, if it's in the wrong direction. In terms of like what Richard's asking, he's asking, you know, as well, would it have been smart for them to maybe raise the threshold and keep the ETH kind of things where they are, you know, beyond and past? But I think, like you say, uh, it's very interesting how it's uh, very deliberate and interesting how it's worded, you know, that it will be um, a more sustainable, more exciting model, allowing you to beat the game and progress up the rankings. Uh, and they'll share more on it as time goes on. And they will be running a new player versus game reward, which we're excited to share with you. Which is the rewards drops, which you've also just talked about. So I'm, you know, overall, I'm, I'm, I'm actually really happy. There's more cards on offer. The the random places thing that you were just talking about, the reward drop. I think that's really smart as well because as long as you go over two hundred points, you have a chance of being getting a card. Mm. You know, whereas before it was like two o five and you get like a little bit of ETH. You know, so even when that goes, it's not as if you're now your two o five isn't worth anything. Your two o five still gets you a chance at a random drop. You know. Um, your 250 would as well of course so um, yeah. but as you say you, you're quite right it's all about the fullness of time what the actual full on replacement will be and I think they're taking very careful steps towards it and again Maxi I think you've hit the nail on the head mate exactly just like you said they've got form for taking feedback on board and adjusting and you know reversing situations or editing them altering them you know to, to work for everyone so but that being said that, that that's the reason I kind of said this at the beginning is the ETH was put out there as like a stepping stone to help people, you know, build up a wallet, get used to the game, all that kind of thing. Um, it wasn't designed to be a cash machine, you know, <laughs> in that sense. Yeah, um, definitely. And, and yeah, um, it's sometimes um, people forget that Soria, uh, the problem, I think, uh, between the team vision and also the player's uh, vision on the game is that for so many, it's an investment. And for so few people it's actually a game and uh, of, of course if you if you play Soria and you have to invest like a thousand euros or something to actually play the game you expect that um, Soria isn't going to devalue your cards uh, the next day and that's a legitimate concern but I think that's going forward Soria is going to um have to find a way to not uh, make this game an investment platform. You see what I mean? Yeah. Like um, they will, they will want to have a, a platform where you can have fun, um, uh, spend a bit of money if you want, spend tons of money if you want, but um, don't see it as like the next good move to make money, and don't have people on YouTube saying like. Oh, I found you guys the best way to make money online. It's by buying uh, digital football cards. Like I've seen French people doing this kind of content. Oh, really? And I'm not sure it's good for the game. It's not good for like the whole ecosystem. I mean, we need to have uh, a, a great reward system, but I don't think like people, um, I would set expectations low for uh, the future on the rewards and actually having like a crazy return on, on investment because right now we like new uh, old managers let's say are used to have a crazy return on investment like you have people like uh, Mark like you never walk alone like Zero etc who spent not that much of money but at the beginning and had like crazy returns on their investments and um, I don't think we want that um, that new managers actually have this in mind when uh, they join Soya and start playing Soya. Like, I'm going to make a ton of money playing this game. 
Yeah. You can make some money, of course, if you're a good manager, if you win cards and if you do good uh, buy and resell. But that shouldn't be the point of the whole game. Like that shouldn't be making money. That should be having fun. <laughs> if you can make money out of it, that's great. Do it. But um, I would say, yeah, it's not a cash machine and uh, we should <laughs> always think about it like at uh, this point. No, totally. Um, so, yeah, and, and, and it's one of these ones, again, like me, me, me and yourself, you know, you've got that kind of benefit of seeing the company come through over the last, yeah. you know, the last, like, I, I've only been here like 10 months, you know, but it's, it's been such a long, <laughs> you know, like I, I ended up watching one of my old videos um, for, you know, just, I, I was just trying to tie videos up together and if I spoke about this before and that kind of thing. And I watched a really old one, and I was looking at the website, and I was like, "Oh my god, man, it looks so shit!" Like, yeah. <laughs> I can't believe that was only like six months ago, or you know, whatever it was. Yeah. Um, so you know, it, it really cannot be understated. You know, the strides and the progression that has happened in such a quick period of time. You know, I do, I, I do feel overall for the, like you've just said there, that game mindset has to be a bit more of what's at the front of most people's minds rather than you know. And don't get me wrong, I, I think unfortunately so rare have almost been like a little bit of a victim of the ecosystem that it is that, that has found it you know like guys like myself Hybe, you know and a bunch of other guys have also came from other platforms that are much more money driven and then when you come yeah. into this because there is similarities a lot of that and don't, don't get me wrong i love making videos as well saying look at my spreadsheet and look how much my collection is worth you know right? but like I say in that video, number one, it means nothing unless you withdraw it. And number two, the majority of my success on the spreadsheet comes from winning cards. You know, I'm not really a big trader yeah, guy. You sure. know I mean? I'm not buying 10 goalkeepers and doing this. And I'm playing the game and I'm getting stuck into it. You know, so it's, it's it's one of those ones, you know, it is a game. And again, you'll see the stuff on Twitter, Maxi, like everyone else. And that's, you, you the kind of people that are sceptical or whatever. That's just my first thing with all this is it's a game. You know, it's a game. You need to pay to play computer games. You need to pay to yeah. play any type of game it's nothing new you know <laughs> and, um, it is what it is you know and yeah and it's actually crazy when you compare it to like other video games or something like when you play fifa for something like you buy cards and you never get to see your money back ever and yeah. like it, it's crazy to see that because you you have to pay the game first then you have to pay the packs then you have to like play the game and just you spent money and that's it and then you have a game where you can enjoy yourself yeah um, have good cards uh build a good team uh do it that like how you like it i mean you're not forced to buy cards um you can do whatever you want and um i mean um like people still expect to earn more money than actually just like a normal video game where you don't will never actually make money out of it so i mean people we always want more and that's uh, that's something i want too i mean i would like Join the club. way more rewards <laughs> and i would like my d2 to get rewards every single game week but i also know that it's not sustainable for the game and i think that uh, time will tell also but i think they ended up at a good solution that will uh, be sustainable and also reward way more people than um, they actually do right now. Yeah, I'm with you. Um, sorry, mate, I'm just trying to click about on a few buttons real quickly. Uh, so apologies. I've, um, I've been on Zoom a lot. <laughs> I just need to, <laughs> to tell Zoom not to kick us out. Um, so I'm just clicking on some stuff and whatever as well. Um, yeah. But I, I, I see on the chat like some messages like, um, or do you balance it so that you don't have to spend a ton to play the game? Also, even now, the advantage of those bigger pay to win accounts winning top prices constantly. I mean, I think you will have two different games at the end. You will have like the games with rare, super rare, and unique cards. Um, and this, this game will never stop. Like, people will, with a lot of money, will play this game and probably make some money out of it and you will have the game with actually more affordable cards with um the new scarcity coming i think it will definitely lower the barrier to entry and you will have i guess i hope a d5 competition or something where you will be able to play 
your um, new scarcity like uncommon or something cards and be able to actually win rare cards and so you can go to d4 then d3 etc um so i guess a new scarcity solves a lot of things because you will have like crazy uh expensive cards right now that will probably be way more accessible uh with the new scarcity i may be wrong about it but i think that's that is going to like um and block a lot of things yeah, well, I see, I'm, I'm not... I, I think like, the move they've made as well kind of helps them um, take the next step cautiously with the new scarcity because I don't think we're really in a position to be needing it at the moment. I know some guys were kind of crying out for it because of the barrier to entry thing like you were speaking about. But I don't think... I think, you know, with the more clubs that should be coming on and, uh, you know, the increased rewards that we're getting, I, I don't think it's going to be an, an issue in the short term. Um... But obviously, if it gets to we've got the top twenty leagues and it's one of the best played football games in the world, then of course you will need an R scarcity at some point. It's just a matter of fact, you know. Um, otherwise, then it just becomes too too close a circle. But um, yeah. I'm just waiting for this to kick through. Sorry, so I'm just pat. I say I, I've just been recording so much and I've been on Zoom with guys in America and stuff like that. So um, yeah, we go brilliant. So Zoom was threatening to kick us out, Maxi, and I just couldn't have that. So. I've just boshed out and made sure that we're not going to kick us out. Yeah, so that. So, so that, I can yeah. I can just catch up now with uh, the comments. So how do you guys feel about the possible disappearance of ETH rewards? I think we've kind of spoke about that. In terms of the disappearance of it, I'm not, you know, don't get me wrong. When I read the announcement, my first thought was some people are going to be sad about this. It probably means I'm going to need, to, you know, talk about it and we're going to need, you know, um, go through it and whatever. And I understand why people would be sad and whatever about it. But like I said, the original intention behind it is to help you get up and running, you know, because Maxi, like, um, and again, I don't know what you'll know off the top of your head, but when the E-Threshold came in, I want to say that was around November-ish time, maybe December, something like that. The user base, uh, yeah. the user base back October, then, I'd say. yeah, the user base back then, I've just hopped on to so rare data, to see how many card owners we had around then. Um, So we're talking about November, December, so we have the chart to pop up. Uh, sometimes it takes a wee bit longer when I'm streaming. It's nothing. So 8th of December, let's even go all the way to Christmas. So around Christmas time when it came out, we had um, 25th, uh, that'll do, 25th, there we go. But, so the amount of people that had one card was 494, <laughs> you know. and That's um, another time. That's definitely another time. You know, 494 people with one card. Guys, I had 10 yeah. cards or more, which is when I think you're a, a, not a, a serious player, is 92. You know, and we look at today, the many people that have one card, 15,000. The many people that have 10 cards, almost 4,500. You know, so if you've been here for that length of time enjoying the ETH payments, then brilliant, because it was for you. You know, it was for the platform to grow, for the guys that have been getting stuck in, enjoying their galleries and, you know, having fun with their friends, interacting on Twitter, all that kind of thing. You should be in a really good situation now compared to, you know, where you were in kind of December before the all the growth and there's external stuff that's played its part as well. The price of ETH, you know, is totally independent to the movements of so rare and what goes on in here, you know. So there's always that to to um, appreciate as well, hundred yeah. percent. So um, yeah, I I think it's right to bear that in mind. And with the increased rewards, I think you know that's just my main take on it. I've always been excited when the point twos and the point ones drop in. But it's never been, for me anyway, it's never been my main drive, my main focus. So it's hard for me to really give an honest account of where some of you guys might be who have only been here for two weeks or whatever. I can understand that. But some of you guys have maybe been here a bit longer. I think, you know, listen, just probably yeah. paid you out enough times to, for you to be happy with it and we'll move on to the next iteration. Um, and then I'm just seeing where else we're at. Uh, so many comments. Sorry, guys, I'm just making sure I've not missed anyone out. Dom's in the house. I think we've seen Dom. Um, that's John. Right, sorry. I think it's sensible with the growth, although it will upset a few people. Yeah, I have a few. Some... Sorry, it's just a lot. Of, all the guys are chatting amongst themselves. Sorry. Uh, Max is 100% right. I'm just interested in so rare for the fun of it. Not really bothered about chasing ETH. It's much more exciting to win cards. How do they balance it? You don't have to spend... Oh, that, that was a question you answered. That's fine. I think that was one of the things I did think as well initially after reading it, Max, was... Um, I think I think super rares and above. I don't think they're really affected by these changes, you know, because the super rares and the uniques are always going to be hovering pre predominantly between D one and D two, and maybe for guys like me and you and D three, you know. So a lot of these primary changes, as much as 
when you look at these new uh, tables and we see, oh, there's so many more rewards going to be dished out when there's a lot of teams mm -hmm. playing, the super rare aspect of it doesn't, you know, if you've been buying super rares for D3, D3's just get better because D3 never had an ETH payment anyway, you know? Um, and if you're the D2 and D1 equally, you know, your life's just get much better because ETH, ETH payments were just never a factor in your activity. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And um, also, SRs are pretty con controversial because um, when you are like a, a good D4 manager and you're looking to go to D3, are you actually going to buy a, a, a super record? Um, is it really a right move? And I think like they didn't find yet the right balance for super rare cards. Like, I mean, um, the thing is, I'm playing five rares in D3, and I ended up like eighth um, last week or something. Wow, congratulations. And yeah, that was a great week. Um, in senior 100, like the captain you know, was Hopefully. really good. But yeah. I mean, wh what does that mean? Is like you, you put super rare cards in the D3 and you get beaten by a lot of five, car or five rare cards lineup. And um, for some people, like they're like, uh, you don't win that much in D2 and you need to have the best SRs uh, to win. And so what do you do with your T2 or your T3 super rares? And like, they need to find the right ways also to make those cards a bit more enjoyable to people that actually own them. Because if you... <laughs> own like a Nicolas Palois super rare or something like you never had, had the opportunity to play it because D3 you don't want to play it because you probably have a better rare and D2 you need to have three other super rares and you probably don't have the budget to actually compete in anything so yeah I mean they have quite some work to do on super rares because they like there's 10 times less than rares so <laughs> Yeah. I mean, you, you expect them to be um, at least, let's say, useful. And right now, SR is like, if you don't own like a Vanakan or, uh, I don't know, a Cross or, uh, let's say, a good forward uh, uh, SR. The pie. Yeah, you, you, <laughs> you are a, a goalkeeper, at least a goalkeeper. You, I mean, it's it's so much complicated to actually enjoy the game with super rare yeah well uh, again i've kind of struggled with that because with the super rares i've got when i look at the rewards at d2 i always kind of think right well i'm probably better just taking the super rares that i think that could push to d2 i'm probably just better keeping them back here at d3 and then being really strong rather than yeah. making that step up and then am i maybe out my depth from a waste in a game week where you know because if you have five super rares and one of them hits 100 if it's in a d2 <laughs> team it doesn't win you anything you're going to be angry um, <laughs> it could have been in a yeah. D three team and it would have absolutely, re you know, you'd have nailed it. Um, so that's the that that's the dilemma I have. I think D two is very unappealing um, for super rares in, in that respect. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to dive back into the comments. So I've got. Uh, I appreciate your answers, but given away more cards could stagnate the market quite a bit. Surely the market needs to keep moving. More card payouts won't help that, or have I got it wrong? So Richard and uh, Max, I'll let you answer this as well, right? So in, in my opinion, right, when you think about all oh, there'll be more cards dished out, right? So subsequently, what your mind will do is you'll think, right, more managers will have satisfactory amount of cards or a gallery or whatever, maybe a bit quicker, or in the short term, they don't need to step into the market as much. There's not as much urgency to pay that amount on the auction. You'll just go to here now, whatever, right? But two things. Number one, the, the card you win, you might want to sell, right? <laughs> the card you win might not fit the team that you're going into. So it might even be a really good card. It's an Asian card and you're not built for Asian lineups and your global is sorted, you're under 23 sorted. It may not work for you. But the second thing, and I think it's a wee bit of an elephant in the room, Max, but there's a lot of prices in the market that need to get a grip on reality. You know, there's some guys that, you know, when you look at the prices of them, you're like, come on. Like, yeah. can we all just stop kidding on here that <laughs> this guy should be 500 quid because he's not, you know? So a dose of reality needs to come back into the marketplace, I think, you know? And I think that will yeah. help do that in a natural way. Yeah, I mean, I think the market was never down to earth or something. <laughs> I mean, I mean I've, seen, I've seen just crazy prices all over, all over 
yeah, all of my time at Soria, I was like, it's it's crazy to see like people listing uh, cards that's twice the the last price of the, the last card sold or something, and um, and I think it will never change. It's like people <laughs> just like the guy who sold Mbappe for fifty f like. If he didn't uh, list it as fifty hertz, he, he wouldn't have like uh, get those uh, those man those hertz. So, yeah. I mean, um, no, but you're right, and I think the comment is actually pretty on point. I think like um, I, I don't think the market needs to be moving all the from all the time, and um, um, I think you have you need to have some um, periods where the market is actually a bit decreasing or. Uh, steady at least or not very active because that's um that's the time where you have some opportunities to buy the cards that you actually need for your gallery and invest in cards that will probably be much uh useful in the coming weeks or the coming month um and i think that right now we see that we enter a bit of this phase where nothing sells that much because you have f uh, going up like so much up um and people are like i want f i don't want cards but i think you need to have uh, separate investments like if you want f just go buy f with like your actual money and just invest in cryptocurrencies and if you want to um, <laughs> play so then just forget that this is actually cryptocurrency and uh, um like um just play with the, the budget that you have. Um, but I guess we're into a phase where a lot of cards will become um, less useful because Jupiter Pro League, like half of the clubs will stop playing. Um, we'll end up at the end of the Europe season for many clubs. And like, like I don't know if you were there last summer and saw the market last summer, but it was I joined crazy. In yeah, and I mean... I had uh, no Onuachu card that was like 0.3 uh, for super rare. And I was like, should I buy this card? And, and at the time, <laughs> F was like, um, I don't know, 200 euro or no, maybe 300 euros or something. And it was a crazy good investment, but I didn't click on the button and say, okay, let's buy it. And uh, I mean, there are lots of opportunities that will come this summer, I think, and um, at the end of the season, because people will get frustrated with their cards that are not used at all and will want to sell them. And I think it's a good time to make some uh, great buys and um, take some opportunities right now. Yeah, totally. Well, if you've been sitting on the ETH, you know, like uh, you, you can definitely capitalize on opportunities at the moment. And that that uh, story you've got there with the Onu, actually, I think we've all got one of them when you think back now, like. I did a video with uh, Fantasy Gaffer, John Walton, and um, yeah. we were kind of both saying that as well. As it looks so simple now, you know, thinking back to December, you should have just bought about five Carlos Velas, and, you know, you'd have been fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> back then, it was about, about half a coin or something, and ETH was like 700 quid or so. So um, you could have picked up, anyway. Yeah, um, you see you see the prices of Mbappé at the time, like January and February. It's like an ETH, uh, yeah. It's, it's very cheap, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like one ETH or something, and you look back and say, oh, maybe that was the right time to buy. And indeed, I think it was the right time to buy. So, I mean, um, let's not get into like a, um, a selling frenzy or a buying frenzy every time. Just take our time and uh, let's see how it goes. And every time you can uh, grab some opportunities and uh, find the right cards for your collection and uh, hopefully build on it uh, for the next season. I think as well, like, so something that kind of dawned on me, Max, when I was looking at the graph earlier in terms of how many card holders there's, there's been in the growth and whatever. Yeah. One thing that kind of dawned on me is, let's see when there is, like, 400 people that own 10 cards, the market can be very fragile to growth and, you know, stagnation or whatever. But when there is 4,000 people with, or 4,500 people with over 10 cards, then it's not as sensitive to, you know, little movements as such, you know, because it's a much... Yeah. I'm not going to turn around and sell a Super Rare any cheaper than I'd have sold it for yesterday off the back of this yeah. announcement. Subsequently, any of my good under 23s or any of my, you know, any of my good... The price of them, in my opinion, hasn't changed, you know, and I don't I don't, I don't, really see that changing. Some cards that are at the lower end of the market, they might get a bit of a haircut, you know, a card that was maybe yeah. 0.08, 
after the E threshold changes, that card might be point zero zero four or something, you know. Um, so I yeah. think that I think those kind of cards they might get. I see a bit of a haircut, but guys that are going to keep you fighting at the top of the these divisions to get cards every week and and get on the podium to actually get some E if you're still chasing that. I think they're always going to be worth something, you know. Um, I've just popped up on the screen, Max. Said my under twenty three D three. So this week I've went with Van de Voort. I've went with Eddie Segura, who's coming in from MLS, which is cool. I've got Eo yeah. Tanaka, captain in midfield, and then Jordan Larson in the Mecca up front. I must admit, it's probably one of my favourite teams for this week because my yeah. Super Rares have both got good fixtures. So I'm hoping they can both hit, and then the three behind them, as long as they hit 50s between them, I'll be hopefully in the money. I mean, you have lineups that I definitely want i mean that <laughs> these are great lineups i mean i'm jealous no it was a straight guy no, oh, do you know it's one of these things max like I'm, i said this um i keep going between calling you max saying max i'm really sorry it's a bad habit I've, I've no adopted. problem um, but you know I, I i've said this recently so again sorry if anyone at home's heard this or whatever right but whenever when the, the last big boom we had or the first big boom we had like january time i'd been sitting on eth for a while and i'd been moving cards around the market and I just seen a see for me. I was just like, I can get so many amazing things now. They're so affordable for me. I'm just gonna get them because I don't want to like look back in anger and think, oh fuck, I should have done that or whatever. So see, and again, this may this kind of comes on to a question we've got here or a point from Chris, right? Chris has said 12,000 12, FIFA points with FIFA is about 160 pound. That sets you up pretty well. If you have to spend 1k plus to compete, it's a big barrier to entry, in his opinion. I do agree if you need to spend 1,000 plus to get in, to really get involved and in participating. Yeah, it definitely is. Now, one thing I will say, right, is if spending 12,000 FIFA points is potentially on your agenda, then you're not going to do that just once. And I know, because I've done it. <laughs> you know, If you're buying FIFA points and you're opening packs, yeah. you don't just do it once. You'll come home drunk on a Wednesday. And you'll do it then, you know, you'll finish work early on a Friday and you'll think, fuck it, I'm going to open some packs. Um, so it's one of these ones, like, it's, yeah, it's easy saying that, Chris, and on, on the face of it, I do agree with you in terms of the FIFA analogy, but, you know, it's one of these things that, you know, it's very rare people stick to a small budget. If you're going to end up buying FIFA points, you know, I've seen myself spend £800 in a season on FIFA points, and I don't mind saying that. So a good few seasons ago now, right enough, you know, but it's easily done. Um... Just trying to think. Uh, so what, where where was that? Adding and giving away more cards kills the value of cards. Like NBA Top Shot having an E for War drives people to play the game from Bob Flynn. So again, like the, the, there's still payments at the top end. And again, when I joined the platform and for the vast majority of the time I've been on the platform, the main payments have been in the podium. You know, this E threshold is, you know, only been here since December. This is April, so it's a five month thing. Um, it's not ideal, you know. There's no one, you know. Obviously, you know, we would love everyone to get Eve payments every week and it to be this. But if they've decided to change it, then it's for good reason. And like Max said earlier, you don't know what is replacing it, so it's hard to have a, a a complete opinion at this point. Yeah, sure. But I guess, um, I guess they will. Yeah, but I mean, the problem will will be if like they drop um random cards based on your performances. Like people will say, yeah, but I want S because I'm able to be to buy actually the cards that I want and not random rewards or I don't know what. So I, I mean, what I'm going to be looking at is uh, the possibility to actually choose your rewards and not just get a random card because <laughs> rewards are already um so frustrating when you get <laughs> a card like if you're like the last time i got uh well the time i got eighth in champion europe i got uh, tapsoba which is a really nice card i don't play it at all and but the ninth got lukaku and i was like okay i mean and the fifth got paul lopez and i mean okay that's a goalkeeper okay but i mean when you get the eighth and the ninth place getting like a better reward than the fifth, there's obviously something wrong about it and you need to correct it. So if you keep have, uh, have, have those disappointments with rewards, etc., and you still have random um, uh, rewards um, replacing F thresholds, well, it's going to be frustrating. So, I mean, they need to find a system that actually lets you pick your rewards or actually 
try to have like let's say i want a defender in champion asia or i want a goalkeeper in i don't know division uh etc yeah. so that you can actually have a reward that actually fits your collection uh, yeah that's quite i was having a chat with somebody about this recently as well because um obviously rewards is before today's announcement have been a kind of topic of conversation um, yeah. for the last week or so. Um, and the, the, the problem that my little group chat kind of come up with when it does come to maybe making some sort of selection towards what kind of reward you want is everyone's in different time zones. Not everyone do, does go on so rare every day. So yeah. if I'm like eighth, for example, and I'm maybe waiting on the first seven people picking their reward before I can get to mine, then... It could be a week down the road before the guy at number 50 gets his, you know. And so yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's a funny one. Yeah. I agree with you, but it's funny. Yeah, I thought about it, but you can actually have like a, a pick between three cards and uh, not have this um, challenge of having to wait for the oh, guy no. uh, over yeah, yeah. to actually pick your cards. And also you could have like, okay, this week, this tier one cards are going to be uh, for rewards. Um, choose the one that you want like uh, you have to rank them based on your preferences and you're going to get the card that you want because the, the guy over, over will have picked another card or let's say uh, yeah, yeah. something that you didn't want and you can have a lot of systems that actually lets you pick your reward or I mean not to totally pick the one card that you want but I mean select between five or three cards like FIFA does and yeah. you can do it only for uh, high reward, like let's say plus 10 and above, um, and not do it for like uh, lower rewards because it, it would be too much complicated. But um, um, yeah, I mean, there are systems yeah. that they can implement that uh, could solve a lot of things, I guess. Yeah, no, I like that. It's the first time I've ever had that kind of put to me. So I actually really like that because as soon as you said it, the first thing that came into my head was FIFA drafts. You know, and it, phew, yeah, phew, 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 the, all the cards opening up, you know, what definitely. am I picking? <laughs> so, um, yeah, that could definitely and work, it, you know, and it, it's, it, it's a game, it should be fun, you know, so I, I, yeah, definitely like that. Um, Jonathan Rolf, I think I'm coming maybe too much from an investment standpoint. I love the game, but I need to decide whether to cash in or if I want to look money into crypto options. Tough decision. Uh, you know, it is one of these, you know, the thing as well that me and you haven't really spoke about yet, Max, is the thing that really got me on the platform in the first place is the whole NFT angle to this because the yeah. cards, honestly, it, it really cannot be stated in, enough, you know, I, I can't overstate this enough, but that technology that these cards run on and them being officially licensed merch is is monumental in so many ways, you know, that we'll only really yeah. see in the next 15 to 20 years or whatever, you know, and it, it, should it be your... As number one, should it be an investment vehicle? It shouldn't be as number one. Number one, it should be a game. And number two, subsequently, if like me, you're able to win like a Wurtz who's 17 and it's the first card he's ever came out with, then you might want to look at that one card as I'm not fucking selling him until he wins the World Cup or something, you know. But yeah. to look at your 35-year-old Korean guy that makes two games a season as an investment, that's not going to pan out for you too well, you know. Um, so there's Mbappe, you know, there's obvious things that people, you know, I make mention of it enough times, me sitting in this room. I don't, you know, if something is shite, it is shite. There was no, <laughs> there's no point kidding on otherwise. Some cards are really good. And see the really good cards, I'll tell you a secret. They're actually yeah. really good football players. And, you know, it's, it's not a mystery to people, you know, like. Yeah, Gary V said that uh, at, uh, at one point, like, if it's shit, uh, people, even if it's, very rare like unique won't buy it because it's unique i mean if it's not a good football player yeah, for example the the unique won't sell because no one cares about it but also, also what i'm looking at is utility and all the possibilities that can uh nfts and card bring like let's say you own a unique card of a uh, lazio player for some uh, for some reason <laughs> and you can get like a season ticket because you own that uh, unique card like you could maybe not a season ticket but like let's say access to five games uh, over the season yeah. and for some example you can get also a jersey from the player and autograph jersey from the player because you own the unique card i mean you can have tons of possibilities around these cards that could be like um 
revolution, <laughs> revolutionary, sorry, uh, and 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 bring a lot more than just a fantasy game. And um, we're so early, we don't know what's going to happen next. And um, having this kind of exciting future is also a good way like, to forget about the whole investment thing. Like, uh, I'm a not fan. I know that if uh, I own a not card, I will be happy even if the player is shit. And I'm sure like um, other guys uh, are football f- club fans. And uh, I mean, what's what's uh, more enjoyable to, uh, f- um, r- than like owning a card of your club and actually cheering for the card and sharing for the club at the same time. I mean, it's a great experience and I'm looking forward to see what um, clubs and Soria actually bring to the table in terms of utility, um, except the, the game part. 100%. And that, that's, the, that's the thing about the NFT angle that really that really does hit for me is because it's a digit. It's not just that it, these aren't just little things that are in my... It's an, it's an actual unique card that's one of 10, one of 100, you know, whatever it might be. It's irreplaceable. It's non-fungible. That's what that term means for anyone that's not picked up on that one. And there's so many amazing games that exist in the world. There's so many uh, trading cards and collectible cards. And see right now, Maxi, the only way I can play a game with someone with any of those cards is walking around to their house and clearing the coffee table and putting the cards out and then me and you're going to play. But if I want to play with my friend that lives in America, or I want to play with my friend that lives in Australia, or I want to just meet somebody random and play with them, that is not yeah. going to happen because there are bits of card that sit in my folder in a house, you know. Whereas with digital card, and again, I was saying this with somebody recently, but um, see as soon as a big company like Wizards of the Coast or something like that, see when they get their teeth into that technology and applying like other more established like actual games of this manner, then you're going to see, you know, this is going to look like nothing, you know, in my opinion, you know, I think you'll see some massive waves across this kind of entertainment spectrum. Yeah, I mean, one thing I'm thinking about is actually trying to find, um, a great offline format for Soria cards. Oh, wow. I mean, yeah, I don't have a specific ideas, but I, I think that should be a, a really great idea if someone finds one or if I find, uh, find one. But I mean, um, having to wait for the weekend or wait for the next season to actually use your cards is something a bit frustrating. And I think that historical data or... Um, I don't know, replays or whatever could help like using your cards um, in another way, like um, playing your cards against another person, uh, which is uh, a random person uh, in the world. Um, Not necessarily tied to actual football games that are playing right now uh, is an interesting idea, but you need to find like the right idea when with the right resources and uh, but I think there's tons of ways you can uh, use your Soraya cards, and we only seen like the, the very top of the iceberg. Well, I'll give you an idea, right? You ready? Yeah. Right. Okay. So there was a platform that's uh, no longer with us anymore called Footstock, right? And see, when COVID hit, yeah. they used to—I don't know if you know this. So sorry if you do, but they used to do virtual matches, right? And what they would do is they would just pick a match out. Let's say it was Southampton v Man City, and every player on the platform has an, a points per game ppg right and when you open up the ppg they'll, that'll be made up of 0.01 goals a match 0.05 assists per match etc right and then it'll just run it on probability you know as yeah. a kind of head-to-head so you could maybe have my five versus your five some sort of similar dynamic and then at the end of it i've beat you three to get it up here i've won you know my five aside team has beat your team at five aside maybe. yeah or something like that so, yeah, so that would, that would correlate current form, but as well, which could be offline or I don't know. So that's an idea. You can you're you're, you're the genius. You. <laughs> <You'll forget. laughs> no, I'm not. A, I'm not a game design. Uh, yeah, I'm not a game designer in in any way right now. But I, I mean, that's just one of the opportunities that uh, you can uh, explore with or with Sora. So that's nice to have like uh, an empty field that you can build on. Yeah. That'd be cool. Um, we've got another one here from Bob. Bob, it's it's hard selling in the market if only if it only has value if people buy. 
and people are hesitant to buy with ETH rising. Yeah, that kind of happens all the time when ETH goes up because you don't want to spend money when it could be worth more or less than it is tomorrow. Um, you tend to find the primary market tends to benefit when ETH is moving because you will find less people enter the auctions. And if you've been sitting on ETH, then there's some auctions that will definitely go um, probably in budget ETH wise than what it was last week for you. Uh, not second I've been on since October 28th. Definitely the right time, very little put in financially. ETH thresholds, ba 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 bum. Stefan is in the house. Stefan, good to see you. Uh, threshold gives tier two, tier three cards value. That value is taken away, so we are sales less often. Da, da, da. So if I'm trying to read this too quickly, that doesn't make sense, Jeff. If that value is taken away, so rare sales less of these cards and secondary market prices plummet as it gets clogged up with more cards, bad people. No, I'm not with you. Uh, Matt, Matt's in the house. Matt, hey, yo, good to see you. Hendo's in the house. Evening, Quinny, good to see you, my man. Toby Hope, everyone, how you all doing? And love the game and the competition. Love it, Bob. Yeah, to, to come back on the on Jeff's point, I think it's interesting get... to see it that way. And um, I'm not... Uh, totally in disagreement with uh, the point i think uh t2 and t3s are used to get to to 15 uh, d4 and um uh, since you don't have the um, the d4 threshold like you lose utility for those cards and i think that makes sense to, uh, at least to me but I, I guess we need to see what they uh, will do with um, the new format and uh and maybe T two and T threes will be will be still uh, useful um, in reaching like the new objectives that uh, they would set. Um, so again, I uh, would rush to conclusions and um, just wait for them to release the actual plans for um, the thresholds replacement. But I, I think it makes sense to me that um, it's um, no longer a viable option for T2 and T3 as uh, cards. Yeah. The way I read that, sorry, was that, the, I, I don't know why, but I thought what Jeff was meaning was like, because they're giving away more cards now, but it's more that the e threshold would be moving away. But again, even though the reward pool or the payout is going to be bigger, the actual volume of cards hasn't changed. There's still only 100 rares, there's still only 10 super rares, you know, so it's just that they've probably got a massive backlog and they're like, how the hell are we going to get all these cards out, you know? <laughs> so, um, it's, it's probably a, a self-fulfilling kind of prophecy in that sense. It helps them fill the quota, helps arm all of us up with cards to compete and go forth, you know. Um, and I, I think I, I've read in the document, or maybe I hallucinated, that they said, like, weeklies will be also for low-budget uh, lineups or something. Yeah, they did say they're going to try and make sure that the special weekly is, like, accessible to all. They want it to be the main thing for them. And I did see that. that I, but I wasn't sure... When I read that, I read that as an example. Like, for example, it will, you know, we'll have this kind of thing in place, or yeah, you might need a common goalkeeper. Could be one of those things. I mean, they had they had a great idea the the, the last time they did like the two hundred the top two hundred uh, players on the weekly like get a random uh, Asian or MLS uh, goalkeeper, and I I think that they need to do this again, like to lower the barrier to entry for goalkeepers. And I think that was a great idea and um, they should do it again, I think. Yeah, so they are. That'd be great. <laughs> um, 100%. Uh, I've got on my champion Euro D4. So I'm going quite strong in there. I've got Navas, uh, Andy Robertson, Sol Niguez, who I've went captain with this week, Carlos Soler and Leroy Sané. I was a wee bit of a meh D4 team. Sani at the moment, like Bayern are, are kind of, I don't know if they're floundering, you know, but they're very thin. If you look at Bayern's bench against PSG, there was nothing on it. You know, it's just a bunch of kids and backup guys. So I'm kind of playing Sani, knowing they don't really have the rotation options to rotate them. Yeah. Um, and they still need to fight for the title, but I'm not really holding my breath on Bayern cards at the moment with there being no Lewandowski and Goretzka at the moment. Yeah, Goretzka was in the squad, but it wasn't on the bench uh, against Paris, so maybe he's going to be back. I don't know, but I have two Goretzkas, so they are definitely. Robert. <laughs> this is definitely <laughs> a player that I watch. But who do you got as uh, your D3 goalkeeper? D3, sorry. Uh, so D3 is all black, and D4 is Navas. Okay, so yeah. Me is always Navas as D three. I don't have all black, so I was quite surprised. Like, but I forgot about all black. Yeah, all black. Like all blacks at home to Ibar, so I'm quite confident that'll yeah. be a, a good week for all black holders. I mean, it's either no points because he didn't make any save and got a, a, a goal on one shot, yep. or sixty points. 
Yeah. So it's is a all or nothing. And I think that I think there's a small risk that Navas might get rotated. A small yeah. one because he, yeah, did, yeah. he did get subbed off at half time. PSG are terrified of an injury at this stage because it happens yeah. all the time with Neymar. <laughs> Navas last year missed a game. Was it a suspension or an injury? But Navas last year missed big PSG matches. So um, I wouldn't be surprised if Sergio Rico played, which is why I'll happily yeah. put him in a D4. And hopefully it doesn't, I mean, but you never know. I had Navas on for this game and I was crazy to see, to hear the journalists say, oh, Navas is going to go out. And I mean... <laughs> Do you know the implications of this move? <laughs> He's not going to get the clean sheet. What the... F- uh, I mean, stuff. No, uh, I don't want this. I mean, who subs this? He's uh, your goalkeeper at halftime. I mean, yeah. Just so rare things. I mean, They're so scared, PSG. You know I mean, they just do not want anyone yeah. to get injured, you know, like... Because they've came so close but, and injuries have let them down so often. Yeah, but they let, like, Mbappe on for, like, the whole game. It's Mbappe, but eh? Mbappe, Ronaldo, Messi, they play every game, you know? Yeah, um, they don't want to go out. Dom is trying to catch you. Goretzka is doubtful. Sula is out. Nabry is out. Lewandowski is out. Goretzka didn't do a full training with the squad. That comes from Dom, at Bavarian SC. Um, and Stefan, if Sorare is there, it is partly thanks to the Ancients. Giving goalkeepers to new ones to cash the prize would be very smart, I think. Yeah. Stefan, I think that's more of a shout to the company rather than me and Maxi. Um, I'm just trying to think what else divisions I've got to kind of hover around. I've got America D4. I, do you know, I was a wee bit struggling to get this team out because I've got so many MLS midfielders. And by the time I got to my America D4, it was like, who did I leave out? It wasn't really who do I want to play. It was like, who can I like sleep at night knowing that I'm not going to play? <laughs> because I've been looking forward to so many of these guys coming back. And it's like, oh, yeah. Fuck, I've still got European cards playing, so there's not really a place for all of them yet. Um, so it's like, who did I prioritise? So I've went with Lewis Morgan and uh, Eric Williamson in this midfield. Lewis Morgan is captain. Gonzalo Higuain is up front. Jonathan Mensah and Maxime Kripal are at the back for me. So, could be okay. Most of my early success on the platform was from Champion America, because when MLS first IPO'd, like, I knew, prob- I- I knew a fair amount about MLS in... I suspect a yeah. lot of people who didn't, when they first came on, I could quickly pick up a few cards and know he's okay, I like him, I've seen him once, you know, whatever. And I'll win a lot of cards quite early and quite quickly from that. And what that really allowed me to do, and history may repeat itself for some of you guys that are out there, but that success built up to me then driving into Europe a bit more and picking up some cards in the off-season because Europe does go off-season at some point, you know. Um, and, you know, so... it even though Champion America, Champion Asian, it may not be your cup of tea, it may not be exactly what you're familiar with, but if you can engage in the game, oh, 100%, they're very firm stepping stones to getting you yeah. into the cards and the leagues you want to be in. I think this year is going to be a bit different though because I heard yeah. that uh, on the French, um, uh, one of the French podcasts, or I don't know, Twitch channel, uh, Talk, um brian was on yesterday and said that uh, there was going to be um there is going to be a euro 21 um competition or something i, I don't know if it's competition but there will be something about it nice maybe on our discord competition or something no 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 i think they need to do a bigger proper. than this I, I think they will have scoring so i i'm not sure if he confirmed it but uh, i guess it's what he meant i didn't watch it but i heard that on the uh summary of the on discord was it all french um, speaking the, the the stream yeah sorry was it a, a french speaking podcast or stream was it yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah, yeah. Yeah, but um, anyway, I think something's going to happen with uh, Euro 21. We need to see uh, what's going to be the format. But I guess it it will give some utility to uh, Champion Europe cards again. And uh, even we will maybe see Strasok Cap. Uh, I don't know the name exactly, but the Lazio um, a keeper that is... Uh, Sarkosha. Uh, yeah. That is not playing because Pepe Arena is playing uh, at his place. But I, I don't know if Albania is qualified for Euro. No. Uh, well, maybe, nah. maybe. Albania, like, it's... I, if I remember rightly, I think they got quite far in the, the Nations League playoff things. They might have got a spot. I don't think they did. Let me check. That could it's, be a great it's shout. Like 20, 
24 teams or something this year. Yeah, it's a lot. Because uh, Scotland only got there because of the Nations League. And I think clubs, uh, not clubs, countries like Albania, I think it's kind of designed to help the Albanians and the Scots, you know, help us get to a tournament. Um, I don't see Albania at first glance. No, no. no Albania. You have North Macedonia, but you don't have <laughs> freaking Albania. We have Slovakia. I, mean, I didn't realize Slovakia made the Euros. That's fantastic. And yeah. the All Black will be there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you see. But he does have Spain <laughs> and Poland and Sweden in his group. So. <laughs> Jesus. Lewandowski will be scoring against him. So, yeah. <laughs> Not necessarily a good matchup. But, I mean. Anyway, I think they will try to find some utility for these cards, and that will be great to have, like, not for people who actually own most of the um, uh, Euro cards, I mean, uh, not Asian or MLS cards, that will be great to have some kind of game during the during Euro. I think uh, the full Euros has been kind of teased for a while, and seeing they did do the Discord competition, I was thinking... I wonder if this is a test for something. And I kind of said that to a few guys, and they're like, nah, you're just... I've got a habit sometimes, Max, of reading too much into some things because, I don't know, I, I'm this way. If, if I speak and I say something, especially if I do, I, I think language, you know, is very... I, I think language can be more deliberate than perhaps it actually is. So when people say things, I'm kind of like, oh, what is that? Why did they say that word? And why did they phrase it this way? That's just the sort of person yeah. I am. So sometimes I can read too much into something that's not there. But, um... But it, it does feel like that was a bit of a test, and from what you've said, maybe they're they're ready to come to the table with a, a good game for the summer. No, but I think it it would be kind of a mistake to limit like the Euro competition, which is a very big competition for um, us European guys, and uh, limited to uh, only a Discord game. Uh, but anyway, I don't know. Maybe there will be some other things to do for them um, during June. So I don't know, but I guess it, it will be a, a really fun competition. 100%. I'm just, um, I'm looking back into my, so the, the last thing I'm going to do, Max, while I've got you on the stream, okay, is I've got my D2 yeah. lineup for Global, right, which was a punty one, right? So I've got a goalkeeper and a centre-back from America that I'm confident both of them will start. I had a chat on Twitter who with a guy who reckons there's a good chance that my Efra Alvarez could start. So I'm happy enough for that. Darwin Nunes could come off the bench, and I can live with that. And I had Cuisance as my fifth player. But after chatting to you, what I'm thinking is I might throw a rare in here rather than the Cuisance. I might try and get somebody in here who will start and definitely get some points on the board. Um, yeah, but I, I don't know how tightly you've been following Marseille or whatever, but what do you think? Cuisance or no Cuisance? I mean, it looks like you can even do um, under 23-D2 with this, can you? I don't, like, have a, yeah. I don't have a goalkeeper. I did think about All that. Right. If I keep Cuisance in, I could put Nubel in, but I don't think Nubel will play. And otherwise, I, yeah. don't, have a def I don't have an under-23 goalkeeper that's spare. Okay. So, man, I don't know. I don't know, but <laughs> who, who are you going to? Oh, I mean... I, I don't see it live. I don't see, oh, I, I'm going to go on to our data and see who <laughs> your options are. That will be better. I've got a lot of guys tied up. That's my thinking is I just don't know who to pull. If I was going to pull a rare up, who would I pull? Because it's like a thread. So if I pull a rare up from a D3 or a D4, then I need to go and replace them down below. So it's kind of, it's a tricky one. I think, um, I mean, I think I might opt for it. Is David playing for you? This this uh... Jonathan David? No, because I think he's out. Do you think he's in? No, no, he's in actually. Yeah, I, I mean he's available. Is he? Okay. Oh, yeah, I, I don't say he's going to start, but he's available at least. I might go with Joe David then because I have him in training. I, I yeah, I'm going to go with Joe David. So I think Lille have got a good game this week. Is it? It's Montpellier, isn't it? Um. Yeah, fifty-seven of. Uh up average for forwards so that's a good matchup i mean if he comes in like 30 minutes or something he can score and uh yeah get definitely. some good points uh, so we're gonna go with joe david then we'll throw him in instead of the cuissons and hopefully he starts if he does start that'd be nice if uh cuissons does start i will be gutted but i don't see it happening have you, have you been following much marcy this season max no i mean cuissons is not playing at all i, I know basically <laughs> They're, they're, they're so much better at, at his spot. Like they're playing Kamara and uh, 
uh, Pab Gay at the at his place, so I don't think he has a starting point. I see uh, more spot, that but... I know Ron Jay is on his way back, but I think I've seen something that made me think Tovan might not start or Paye, one of them. And normally, if one of them isn't available, he can get some minutes. So, but I don't know, I can't remember where I've seen that or what I was thinking. I mean, looking at previous lineups, yeah, I mean. He replaced who last time? Let's say Cuisance replaced uh, Payet at the eight minutes before the term. Yep. So I guess I guess there's not an easy spot for him. So yeah, I mean I think like right, let's go David he, David if he plays twenty minutes he he has probably a better shot than Cuisance that to actually score a DA a decisive action. And well, I wouldn't be bet on uh, Cuisance's all-around score, so I don't know. I mean, you can. It's basically a game where Cuisance will start and score a hundred, and <laughs> you will be mad at me because David didn't play at all. So. I won't be mad. I won't be mad. No, no, not at all. But I'm f yeah. No, I'm gonna go with. Uh, I'm gonna go with the David. I, I didn't play him at all because I didn't think he was gonna be in the squad. But if you reckon he will be in the squad, then I'll throw him in. Um, yeah, he, he he trained with the team yesterday and uh, the coach said he was available. Lovely. Well, that's music to my ears. I'm just double checking on my can I be used list here. Yeah, we'll go with the David. So yeah, let's hope that does something in D2. You never know, stranger things have happened. Um, yeah. You, you don't know, like storms or um, I don't know what, <laughs> rain <laughs> can stop a game. And... Volcanic ash. Um, like one, one day like Eredivisie like a whole day of Eredivisie was stopped because of wind and uh, the challenger yeah. division was wide open yeah a, a Sunday like whole games were oh, yeah. whole games were constant. I actually didn't play I remember that I, I, I don't know I didn't know it was wind I thought it was snow but fair enough I to make it oh yeah out. snow 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 yeah snow. right so oh, but basically know. weather <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah sorry I was just thinking about loud apologies but yeah um I've got a week, I've got a crappy kind of D four lineup going out there trying to chase down some Eve. I've got a common Paul Lopez, a Gianluca Mancini, Captain DeAndre Yedlin, Daichi Kamada, yeah. and Aika Ugbo. So we'll see if they can go grab me my fifteen dollars or my thirty dollars or whatever it is. Um, try and go pick that up before it ends. But yeah, magic. Um, Mac, I've had a lot a lot of fun having you on the stream. Um, We've not really got um, is anyone else coming in. Uh, hi, Quinny. Question for you. I have a common goal MLS goalkeeper and a rare one. Would you put your strongest MLS team in D4, Global or Champion America? Uh, I would put your stronger one in Champion America if you've got a strong Champion America team. Because if you were to put a strong Champion America team into Global D4, you could be kind of outgunned by somebody who throws a Vanekin in there or a Vlasic or whatever. Because, like... You know, Vlasic is in my D3, but he was very close to being in my D4. And there'll be a lot of managers in my position that have a lot of strong cards that are just going to find themselves in some D4 categories this game week, you know. So, um, in that situation, Mike, if you've got a good MLS team, I would just put it into Champion uh, America D4. Um, All Black would have lots of saving to do. Could be good. Yeah, that's definitely right. And David is back in training this week as well. Thanks, Josh. Brilliant. Um, is there anything else on anything we've discussed, Max, that you would want to touch on or anything else you'd like to throw out there? No, I mean, it was good fun and uh, I, I love seeing how your lineups are and I'm so jealous about them. So <laughs> that that gives me a bit a bit of work to do, like to build like amazing lineups like yours. So, yeah, I mean, not, not much else to say. I mean, that was great to, to talk to you and... Um, yeah, looking forward to do this again uh, uh, soon. And uh, yeah, uh, anyway, if you have like any questions or something, like don't hesitate to shout or in the chat or if you have something that comes up uh, right now, don't hesitate. But yeah, uh, I like the content that you make. It's great fun. It's oh, always like the the gift, like when you're dancing, when you see like the roster prices, like it's <laughs> the best thing ever like regard uh, uh, yeah i mean when i saw it it was like i saw the actual video also it's it's so fun and uh no, no i mean it's just like good content and uh i mean 
like fun and entertaining and also like uh, i don't have the word in french uh, in english but um uh let's let's see, let my, let me find it because i want yeah, to sure. say it but um my english is not complete uh that's okay i don't find what the i don't know um i mean it's like being nice to people i mean it's it's fun to see you smile it's fun to see you enjoying the game like not being like a guy who's doing videos just because he wants referral links or something and that's so much uh better than uh than like passion is so much better than just doing this for opportunities or financial stuff or whatever so thank you for doing this that's a great service to the community and uh, i hope more and more people will come and enjoy your content thank you very much and on that note guys in the description down below if you're not watching this live there'll be links to so rare data if you're if you've not found it and you're on this stream I don't know what you've been doing with your life, but <laughs> you need to go to Sawyer Data. And like we spoke about earlier, it, it didn't actually meant to kind of hammer this in a bit more, but there is a very easy PayPal donate button on the website. And, you know, like I pay £5 a month, £10 a month, £15 a month for shit, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> and Sawyer Data is, is far from that, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's worth every penny, you know. So I would encourage these guys, any spare, spare pounds and pennies you've got lying about, it goes a long way to helping, you know, the site develops, Max, so quickly and so well, you know, everyone's, honestly, everyone who I speak to privately is blown away with the advancements that you've been able to make, you know, so I would encourage anyone at home, you know, um, if you are able to support Max and his undertaking with the with, with the website, then please do, because uh, it will benefit you and turn everyone else as well, and again, Max, on behalf of everyone, thank you very much for all the work and time you put in, mate, is yeah, un undoubtedly so valuable. Yeah, I mean, it's great to serve the community and, um, of course, like, if you want to support the website, please do, but don't, uh, if you don't have the spare money, don't do it, it's okay. Oh. I will find another way to make a living, it's okay. But, uh, I mean, I don't, I don't, um, like, the website is fine, even if uh, not everyone is paying for it, but it's so much appreciated when, like, people are actually donating and uh, recognizing the work I do. And uh, hopefully also the nations up the website grow and uh, it keeps getting bigger and bigger and have uh, better features. Uh, 